on BBC Radio Bristol. It's Vernon in for John all this week and next week. And let's talk about, and it's always dodgy for anybody who's on the radio to go into this sort of arena, but let's talk about the words we use. Uh, because they do say, or they used to at least say, that they, they sort of reveal a lot about you. Apparently the terms that you use reveal whether you are you or non-you. Now, you and non-you uh, were published by a linguist called Alan Ross in 1954. You, referring to the words that upper-class people would use, uh, non-you to people who were not upper class and uh, made famous by socialite Nancy Mitford a few years later. Uh, but is it really something we should worry about, what, 60 years on from all of that? Do you say pardon or what? Lavatory or toilet? Sofa or couch? The list goes on and on. Let's find out a bit more. We're going to speak to Grant Harold, who's a former royal butler. Hello to you. Thanks for joining us on BBC Radio Bristol. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. And broadcaster and motoring correspondent Zog Ziegler, a man I've known and spoken to on the radio many times over the uh, past few years. Hello, Zog. Watcher, Vernon. Watcher. Watcher, <laughs> cocker. That's me being posh, uh, mate. He's. Uh, Grant, <laughs> yeah. um, does it matter if we say lavatory or toilet or dinner or tea anymore? Do you know, I think in the big scheme of things, it's, it's, it's not as much of a problem as it used to be. But I think the, what I've discovered is in certain societies, if you don't use the kind of right terms, you do get the kind of funny looks. And I know it shouldn't be like that, um, but it depends where you are, who you're with. And if you use the wrong words, for example, if I was to say, I'm going to go to the toilet instead of saying Lua Lavatory, uh, you'd get people giving you kind of looks. And it's, 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 a, it's a thing that goes, you know, it goes back, obviously, back to the 50s when... Nancy Mitford um, famously kind of penned it, and, um, and to this day it still has a place, uh, whether that's right or wrong. Mm. What about the royals then? Do they do they definitely speak you rather well, than non you? I, I would say they do because again I work I now work with them at a royal, and uh, obviously I worked for royals. I now work with a cousin, Princess Katrina, and whenever we're having conversations, and things she would never. If I ever got a word wrong, I would never be corrected on or anything like that because royals would never correct you for saying something wrong. But at the same time uh if if she was going to go to the the, the lavatory or loo or toilet she would say she's off to the, the lavatory so the royals do use it but again it's the the aristocracy when they're kind of during the education these are the kind of words that they're obviously taught um to kind of use and there's words that you don't and as you said pardon is is almost seen as a as a swear word believe it or not you you would never say pardon um it would be what <laughs> Which, Which is the one that surprises most people. It does surprise people. I've had this discussion on social media and people can't believe when I say to them, oh, you know, it's never pardon, it's always what, because they think it's the other way around. You can say, I beg your pardon, just not pardon. OK, now I've had this conversation, not on the radio, but I had this conversation in private with Zog in the past. Mm. Zog, lavatory or toilet? Oh, I'm very much a, very much a lavatory man. <laughs> I'd heard. <laughs> yes, my, in... my, I had an aunt um, uh, who was proper posh, if you like, um, and she um, referred to common people, as she put it, as toileteers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I he's like a bit it. of a toileteer. I like that. Um, and also, yeah, she would make the point that lounges were only found in hotels and airports, um, which is a good thing. And there, there was also not just so much um, how you say it and what you say. Yes, settee, that's a bad one. Um, front room, parlour, <clears throat> bit dodgy, tea, dinner. But it's also maybe the way you conduct yourself. Um, the other one that she would pick up on, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to be a grandfather, and so I have grandchildren. I pick my grandchildren up on toilet and pardon, and my and yes and and and, and um, what I'd rather you said what than pardon would come up frequently. Mm. Although that, whenever oh, I hear holding your knife like a pen, yeah, well then when I hear what I can't help thinking of Mrs. Richards in Faulty Towers. <laughs> what 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 what? Yeah. Um, let, let's put this one to bed totally then, Grant, if mm. we can. Um, is it the living room, the sitting room, the lounge? What is it? Well, it depends. It can be a sitting room if, if, if it's a small property. But then again, if you're in a, a house and you want to be a, a little bit grander, why not the drawing room? Yes, withdrawing room. The withdrawing oh, room. room. Yes. The withdrawing room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll confuse people even more. It will. Well, the, well, well apparently, the, uh, you, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that the room that the men withdrew to to smoke their cigars and drink brandy after the meal? Well, 
Yes, but also we've got to remember in the, the big kind of grand old houses, the, the ladies would normally withdraw into the, the drawing room so they could sit and have the, their um, coffee and, and, and chat. And the men would normally stay in the dining room. Oh, really? Room. Oh, it was the oh, ladies yeah, yeah. who withdrew? Oh, absolutely. Oh. The, the men would continue staying in the, the dining room, which is still a tradition that a lot of them still do. But originally the word, obviously, withdraw was because you're withdrawn into the other room, mm. uh, obviously, where it came from. But, you know, in the Edwardian times, it was very much, as you see in Downton Abbey, that's why in Downton Abbey you see the men still sitting at the table and the ladies leave. It's not because they've suddenly been banished or told to leave the room. It's because they all go off to have a very civilised talk in the drawing room where the gentlemen probably sit there and, and have their, uh, their cigars and their port. But Zog, what confuses all of us now, I think, is that Princes William and Harry, they talk right down with the kids, don't they? Well, I think that this is the sort of the, the new image of the royals, isn't it? Um, th th yes, they are... They're, they're getting down with the kids. But I would imagine they still probably say napkin rather than serviette. <laughs> yes. And I bet you they don't tuck their serviettes into the collar of their shirts. No. That's another absolute no-no. Shocker. Absolute and the shocker. other one, the other one that um, um, uh, Jilly Cooper pointed out um, rather sweetly was when her husband died, she would get letters and say, sorry about his passing. Uh, rather than dying. He said, passing as though he was good at rugby or something. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear her saying that. It's, yeah. Well, that's an interesting one, because the BBC has an obituary editor, and he says the one rule about all of this is that nobody passes on, uh, th that you die, basically. Yeah. Mm. That, you know, say what it is, say what's on the tin, basically. I'm wondering, Grant, if this is all changing, because do we not all speak differently, use different words when we're on social media or texting compared to conversation. So we're all adapting what we say depending on how we're speaking and also the medium we're using now. We are, I mean, very much, and I've had this conversation with people before because, obviously, being from Scotland, our, our dialect and the words that we use are very different um, to other parts of the country. And I think each and every area has got their own unique way of, of, of speaking. And it doesn't mean to say that they don't use the words loo and lavatory and drawing room up there, it's just, it depends on your kind of background, where you're from, but uh, again, the, the thing is with, you, you know, the younger royals, as we've pointed out, they're very much um, kind of changing things, so they're kind of using the kind of words that we all use, but again, uh, as you've pointed out, the certain words that they'll, they'll stick to, it. and it's only because they're kind of seen as the correct, the kind of words, and, and uh, again, as we mentioned with the whole pardon and what, if it's seen as a swear word, of course you're not going to use those words. So, the, so there's still words that I think that we'll see, they won't, it will still remain the same. But yes, I mean, it's the 21st century, everything's adapt, etiquette's adapting all the time. I mean, these days I'm having to do classes on mobile devices now. It's not just about how you hold your knife and fork, it's how you hold your mobile phone. <laughs> now, I caused consternation when we were talking about this before the programme started, because there was this whole thing about, is it dinner or is it tea? And so th there is a sort of north-south divide about that. But I call it neither. Well, I, I always refer to the meal I have between about seven o'clock and nine. I always call it supper. Am yeah. I a terrible person? Um, no, that's lovely for you. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's been years since I've been patronised so well on the radio. <laughs> so lovely for you. Yeah, lovely for you, yeah. You, the, the, you. Word, the word supper is absolutely fine. I mean, yeah. supper tends to... Uh, I think I'm right in saying supper tends to kind of be a later meal. I mean, from what I understood, you'd have supper in the kind of big houses after 10 o'clock, where dinner would be more between 8 and 10, say 10.30. And tea, you either have your morning tea, um, obviously with your breakfast, you have your livingsies where you can have your tea, or you have your tea between 4 and 6. High tea. High tea, you look mm. at 6 o'clock, between 5 and 6 ish, but it's more of a high tea's become more of a. Well, this is an interesting one. I've noted that down south, it's more of a children's tea, where in Scotland, uh, they'll go off and have the high tea, which is like fish and chips and a cup of tea, which is delicious. Yeah, lovely. Mm. Zog, am I getting it away with supper for my evening yes, meal? Yes, I, I yeah? think I, I sort of see supper and there's a slightly different. Um, perspective from Grant, but supper is sort of fairly informal. Might just be, you know, the husband and wife or a couple or or just the family. Whereas dinner maybe is a bit more formal. Uh, maybe with a guest or two is the way I um, is the way I see it. But the, the language is changing, and there's a lot of things coming in. There's the the, the one killers for me are like when you ring the bank and they somebody answers and say. Hi, thank you for phoning the right... 
the, the high street robber, how may I help you today? Like you haven't helped me in the last yes. 50 years. Well, the one, I don't, I'm going to sound like a snob when I say this, but I, I, I just find it incredibly rude when I go somewhere, particularly in relatively formal surroundings. So that might be like a building society or a bank or even maybe going out for a meal. And somebody comes over to you and says, are you all right, guys? I oh, yes. Mm. I, 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 I'm going to sound terribly snobby but yes especially just when there's rude. women in your company well it just sounds rude well, you're, you're actually don't lucky don't I mean, bow and scrape but guys i mean yeah. you're lucky guys i mean I've, I've even been called mate i mean i don't know what an ethic thought i must have <laughs> knew, known me from a previous life or something when he said mate and i'm sitting there thinking no i don't hey, think what? so yeah and he's and, he, and, and and grant the guy that called you mate mm. probably served you a cocktail in a jam jar exactly well actually you were there <laughs> i can tell you were next to me weren't you it was an awful experience <laughs> <laughs> we are getting lots of calls on this one, so we'll go through what people call various things in their house on the way. But, gentlemen, can I just say, lovely jubbly, me old muckers, Tom Mutchley. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us, Grant <laughs> Harold. Good to talk to you, mate. All right, mate. <laughs> Grant Harold, former Royal Butler, and Zog Ziegler, journalist and broadcaster. Do keep your calls coming, 0345 905.